What is culture industry? The term culture industry was introduced into the critical theory of the Frankfurt School by Theodore Adorno and Max Horkheimer in the 1940s. It refers primarily to the entertainment industry. In the draft notes for their dialectic of enlightenment, Horkheimer and Adorno initially used the term mass culture, but that term was subsequently rejected on the grounds that it might seem synonymous with a contemporary form of popular art or a culture that is spontaneously created by the masses. The traditional and enlightenment notion of culture implies a critical attitude towards the status quo, and Adorno and Horkheimer retain that notion by arguing that social freedom is inseparable from enlightened thought. The culture industry, in contrast, produces works of art whose every detail is tailored to the needs of mass consumption, devalues the experience of art and dulls the critical faculties of the consumer. In a mass culture, the individual consumer is said to be king, but his supposed cultural needs have been anticipated and shaped by the requirements of the industrialized constraints of an industry typified by Hollywood cinema, kitsch commercial radio, advertising and repetitious songs. Apparently differentiated products, such as A and B movies in the Hollywood system, or magazines sold at different prices, are characterized not by differences at the level of their actual subject matter, but by the prior identification and classification of the differences between their probable consumers. Something is provided for everyone in order to ensure that no one escapes the dominance of the market. The culture industry thus inverts the schema of enlightenment thought. For Kant, art was defined as purposefulness without purpose, the principle of the culture industry is defined by Horkheimer and Adorno as purposefulness for the purposes declared by the market. The theory of the culture industry relies heavily upon a version of Marx's theory of commodity fetishism. As in the capitalist economy as a whole, exchange value is more important than use value, and evaluation becomes the sole criterion of value. The fetishistic value placed upon conspicuously high production values and effects results in a situation where the consumer who buys a ticket for a Toscanini concert is worshipping the money he has paid for it. The effect of the culture industry is to promote social and intellectual conformity. The inability to speak in the prescribed fashion, or to reproduce accepted formulae and conventional judgments, becomes a criterion for exclusion. Exclusion is also the fate that awaits serious artists like Arnold Schoenberg or Anton Wieben, who are prepared to express the anxiety or terror about modernity that others evade by regressing to the norm. Their work will be either homogenized and adapted to the needs of the culture industry, or marginalized and denied an audience. It is often claimed that Adorno in particular is a defender of an elitist modernism, who is scornful of a culture that is freely available to all. He himself consistently argues that both high and mass culture are marked by the stigmata of capitalism, and that they are the torn halves of an integral freedom that cannot be reconciled in modern society. The lost ideal is represented by works like Mozart's The Magic Flute, in which the utopia of the Enlightenment did coincide with the pleasure of light operatic song.